So good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning I wanna to talk to you about what I see as the elephant in the room when it comes to obstacles and that is debt. So let's jump right into it. So I built Margin in order to, uh, to be a strategic linear approach to personal finance. And I know that many times it's so easy to jump around topics and look at a bunch of different areas, especially if there's one in particular uh, that causes you the most stress. Uh, but I built this intentionally in order to build margin over a given period of time. And so I believe that debt was important to jump into being that that's the elephant in the room, being that that is the aspect that I that I often hear the most feedback on of what people are trying to figure out. So I believe that people in general live lives of quiet desperation when it comes to debt. And oftentimes when I have conversations with people, uh, they have a visceral reaction around their debt. It is something that is oftentimes emotional for people. And, and I think much of that comes down to the fact that it is easy to get into debt, but it's not so easy to get out of debt. And oftentimes with that debt, it is, uh, it is something that, that stumps people. They don't know necessarily how to reduce their lifestyle in order to live within their means in order to build that margin so they can get that debt paid off. So walking through the journey that I have, uh, I have experienced this firsthand, you know, dealing with debt, having to figure out how to build margin in order to pay off that debt, and and then also being able to walk through uh, that process with other people. And, and through that inspiration, through that journey, I've found that so many people mortgage their futures. They don't even think about it either. Uh, you know, they, they'll go out and get one loan uh, in order to get something that they may not be able to afford right now. And, uh, and that ends up leading into a lifestyle uh, where they will purchase more and more things that are on credit that they actually can afford. And it actually has a ripple effect in their finances. So sometimes it can be challenging to, um, to back that out and figure out a good plan for them. But I would encourage you that I've seen uh, people with massive amounts of debt just hunker down and figure out how to build margin into their finances so that they can get out of debt. So you're not a lost cause, there is hope. So in 1971, President Richard Nixon uh, halted uh, the US dollar from being connected to gold. So gold as the underlying asset or the underlying value. And so with that, what ended up happening was, uh, was basically as that was lifted, uh, Markets rallied during that time, but what ended up happening is it opened the floodgates of a new economy and an economy that was fueled by debt. So this debt propelled us into a place where uh, it pushed for economic growth. So the actions taken during that time uh, rapidly increased the economic growth. And, and what we found was, uh, was it based, banks were basically moving in to uh, leverage people's deposits in order to make loans, in order to then, uh, you know, basically build and grow the economy. And those loans, that, that money that was going into people's hands uh, was then fueling purchasing, which was fueling jobs, which was fueling people's incomes and so on and so forth. So as of the most recent data, banks are, uh, are holding a leverage ratio of about 8.8%. So basically what that means is that for every deposit, every dollar that's deposited, uh, that dollar is then, uh, leveraged up to nine times in order to create loans. So a healthy ratio uh, for banks is above 5%. So for the last 10 years, uh, banks have, based on that ratio, have performed well and have, um, have had a healthy uh, leverage ratio. So with that, they are well capitalized uh, or are being called well capitalized. And so therefore, uh, less than 1%, I think it's half of 1% uh, of banks are not well capitalized. So that tells a story because basically it tells us how many times uh, that $1 of deposit is leveraged by the bank in order to fund loans. So if banks are overall healthy, 
Uh, my next question would be, how healthy is our nation? And oftentimes we look at a, uh, a debt to GDP uh, for a country to be able to see how healthy the economy of that country is. So I found an article uh, that uh, was within the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, and I'll read the quote to you. And I believe that that tells a, a pretty clear picture of how we are doing from a debt to GDP uh, standpoint. So what it stated was in the second quarter of 2008, uh, which obviously is about 12 years ago, they're comparing 2008 to current, uh, the US uh, federal debt held by the public totaled about 5.3 trillion or 35% of the gross domestic product. So the GDP. This figure grew to 20.5 trillion or 105% of GDP uh, by the second quarter of 2020. So going into the second quarter of 2020, it grew to that number. And I believe that was actually updated and it's it sits right at 107, uh, so 107% uh, you know, after that adjustment. Uh, but beyond that, uh, to put it in another way, the national debt has increased 400% in 12 years. While over the same period, national income has grown by just 30%. So might I add that GDP level of 107% at the end of uh, the first quarter going into the second quarter uh, didn't last because by the end of the second quarter, we were at a whopping 135% of you know debt to GDP. So the article went on to say that when the interest comes due, it can be paid in legal tender. That is by printing additional US or Federal Reserve notes. It follows that a technical default can only occur if the government permits it. The situation here is similar to that of a corporation financing itself with debt convertible to equity at the issuer's discretion. So obviously a ton of words there, but boiled down, the country can basically print currency in order to pay the interest coming due so that it would not uh, basically be, be insolvent and can continue to be a going concern. Now, that's not sustainable. That's a short-term fix. And obviously right now there's a lot of talk around a great reset. There's a lot of talk around, um, you know, uh, digital currencies moving away from the US dollar. Uh, but as of right now, the US dollar that's based on the confidence of, uh, of this nation. So we broke a record in 2020. No, not a good record, uh, one not to be proud of. But basically what that record was, was uh, that we broke uh, the record for debt to GDP as a percentage at the 127% mark uh, that surpassed that of our 1946 uh, World War II record. So not something that we want to um, you know, break, uh, not a, a good move forward for the economy, I would say, and, uh, and also something that we should be concerned about. So it is hard for us to measure something as large as our national debt of 27.5 trillion. And to help you with these figures a little bit more, uh, based on our population, if every person were to break that debt down and, and carry that debt for the nation, we would have a little over $83,000 of debt per individual. So it's $83,207 per individual across this nation, that would be in addition to the debt loads that everyone holds. Now, that is not being proposed right now, but uh, but nonetheless, just to put it in perspective. So if America is able to print currency to stay afloat, to reach its obligations, and if uh, banks are well capitalized overall, where does that leave us as consumers? Where does that leave us in regards to our personal finances, as well as the debt loads that Americans hold and, and carry on a day-to-day -day basis? So my call to action today would be to look into your own personal finances, uh, look in the mirror and see how your 
finances look? What what are your obstacles? What are the main things that are keeping you up at night when it comes to your personal finances? And what aspects do you need to build that margin in so that you can relax a bit so you can rest easy and know that uh, those obligations are covered and taken care of. If this information is helpful to you, explore the margin membership where me and my team will help you take the information you're learning and apply it to your life and your finances. I have built an interactive course that allows me and my team to connect with you and come alongside people like you to help you revamp your finances and build margin into your life. Click the link in the description below if you're interested. We hope to see you there.